Okay, welcome back to building a rabbit clock, part three. Right now I'm working on the gears. I'm just getting all the gears built, um, gears. That way it'll make the rest of the assembly more enjoyable. So I've just been building gears all day. Got lots of gears here. These are, they've been glued and pressed, but I have not sanded them or lacquered them or anything like that. So, <clears throat> I'm working on the most important of the gears now, the escape wheel. It's got these fancy little tines on there. And I thought I should show my method before I run out of gears. So they come printed and cut, but not very well. So I've got a number 11 exacto knife here. Get you one of these. This is good. And I'm, I'm just lightly going over each factory cut just to make sure that the parts come out without ripping the wheel and just for a little bit more uh, precision See, so I recommend doing that to each gear it takes a while but if you really want to build this clock and you really want it to work don't cut corners well do cut corners I guess Cutting all the corners. So I'm going to go through all five layers of the escape wheel and then we'll look at gluing them together. Alright, so we've got all of the pieces from the escape gear cut out. Let's glue it. So I thought I'd want to show you my gluing process procedure because it's working out pretty well. So lay out your gears in the order that you want to glue it. Make sure the right sides are up. See, I'm going to have all the tines point that way. Now, there's usually a front and a back. The front will often have words on it. Do that one last because the back's going to get a lot of glue all over it. So we'll go ahead and put that down here. Go all the tines pointing the right way. Okay. Start with your back. Lay it down. I've got a paintbrush, just a cheap paintbrush. I don't know what size it is, it's decent. I've got a jar with water and a jar with glue. This is the, where'd it go? This stuff. Okay, uh, if I'd have known I was gonna put it in a jar, I would've got a bigger one, but this is what I'm using. Um, I don't recommend like this isn't a craft glue project. This isn't a project you're gonna want to use safety scissors on. This is you gotta use real tools on this if, if you know if you want a measure of success. So here's what we'll do. We'll take a brush, we'll take our glue, dip just a little bit on the edge there. Okay? And then we'll go around it. All the way around. Make sure you get all the tines. Don't worry about whatever surface you're gluing on because this glue just wipes off with a wet cloth later. So I'm just going to slather this thing with glue. Especially since this is the escape wheel. You want these tines to be extra tough. If you break a tine, you're screwed. Throw it away. So I'm going to get lots of glue on there so this thing is like paper mache shut all the way around. Okay. I like to go over the tines like this because it puts glue on both sides whenever you put, uh, well you'll see in a second. Just a little bit more here. Get the insides real good so they don't slip or warp. more for good measure. All the tines are good and glued. Okay, now we'll take our next piece. Okay, now this is critical. Don't worry about lining up the center hole. Worry about lining up the tines on either side, the teeth of the gear. Why do I keep calling them tines? Anyway, this is the most important part. If you don't have the patience to do this, then you don't have the patience for the clock. I'm an idiot. 
I mean, maybe that would look cool when it's done, but that's not the purpose. Okay, so obviously this gear has a special rotation that it must be glued into. There we go, let's try that. Alright. Now you want to get these tines perfectly aligned. If they're not perfectly aligned, you can take the Dremel to them later and smooth them out. I mean, I'm going to do that anyway so they're perfectly flat. But if you don't have the patience to get them perfectly aligned now, then I doubt you're going to have the patience to Dremel them all smooth later. So, <clears throat> take your time, do this right. I'm mostly telling myself here, I'm telling Greg, take your time, do this right. Because like I said, this is the most important gear. Now most of these look good, except for this one right down, where's the camera? Right there, that guy. That guy's got a problem. I wonder what his deal is. Hmm. Hmm. It's weird. Anywho, so all the glue that I got on my cutting board here is okay. I'll wipe off the back of the gear when I'm done gluing them, and I'll wipe off the board. I've got a towel and some water. It'd be fine. Hey, but I kind of like it because it helps keep my gear in place while I'm slathering in it up here. So This is probably boring for you to watch. You could skip ahead if you want. But I appreciate you sticking with me through all of this. Because it's a very mindful activity. I've got two kids, a wife and a dog, a house, a mortgage, two cars. Everything, everything all the time. Something wants my attention. It's nice to just be able to focus on one task and not worry about what's ahead. You know, I don't get to do that very often. I'm always got to plan this, fix that, figure this out. Nah, man, all I got to do is put glue on some cardboard. It's very zen, if that's a thing. I've been doing this all day. I'm just about done with gears. Just about. We've got looks like three more to go. Little ones. Alright, that ought to be enough glue. Let's do this one right, huh? Okay. Make sure the times line up. <laughs> now, here's another thing that can go wrong. Whenever you're pressing these pieces together, make sure you press straight down. Don't put any sliding force on it at all because that glue, when it squirts out, acts like a layer and it'll slip right off. The very first piece I glued, a big piece, glued it together, put it under the tiles. I guess I m moved the tiles a little bit. They shifted. When I came back the next morning, it was half an inch off. And I had to tear it apart, tear it apart, and glue it back together. So be careful. This glue lets it slide all over the place. you got to be smarter than the glue. Just press straight down. Because once, once that glue tacks, it's good. You can handle this and it's not going to slide around. You can put the next one on and paint it and it's not going to shear the layers. Alright, here we go. Two more for this gear. Now when I'm done gluing a gear, the big ones I put under the tiles over there. I've got three of them in here being pressed right now. They've been in there for a couple hours. The glue that I'm using sets, it says 30 minutes but really it takes overnight to harden. So I'm not going to do anything more to those gears today until they've been, had a chance to harden overnight so that I can dremel the teeth and lacquer them and stuff like that and not have to worry about further warpage. But once I'm done, here's a gear that I've nearly completed. This is the winding gear. 
I've got some washers that it said to glue on there, to, I guess to help it hold on to the shaft. And I'm gluing those washers on. I got these little clamps from Harbor Freight for a dollar. I'm going to pack a six of them. So I recommend picking up some cheap clamps. Uh, the book also says clothespins work great for holding gluing pieces together. I've got this clamp working on a little gear here. So it's he's a little guy, he'll go right in the clamp. But don't don't even bother with the tiles. <laughs> glue and gears, glue and gears. Don't worry about getting glue on the sides of the teeth because that'll just help strengthen them going forward. We're gonna cut it all off anyway with a Dremel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fourth layer. There we go. Get that right on there. Right on the line. Top, bottom, left, and right. Make sure all the teeth line up just right. Okay. <clears throat> now on to the last layer. first time I made this clock, when I was much younger, I didn't have any tools. My parents wouldn't let me use an X-Acto knife or a Dremel or anything like that. All I had was a standard pair of scissors, some Elmer's glue, and I think I had some sandpaper. Of course, it didn't work. I did have super glue. I had tons of super glue, and every time something wasn't quite right, I'd just super glue it and then try to sand it down. Of course, with sandpaper, if you don't have the right grit, all it's going to do is make the friction worse. So, there's another guy on YouTube that built one of these clocks, and his doesn't really work. But he said it's a great hobby. This, building this clock, is a great hobby project for people who don't really care if the finished product works. I'm like, huh? What? What do you mean? You're going to put. 30 plus hours of your life into some project and you don't really care if it works? I don't understand that. Oh, this cuss better work. What am I doing this for if it's not going to work? Whew. Okay. So, this that's the escapement gear. Escape wheel. Escape wheel. So now you can see I've got glue all over the back side, glue all over my board. <clears throat> I'm going to take a towel here, get some of my water. I'm just going to wipe this clean. That way it won't stick to the tiles when I press it. Nice clean gear. Let's tile that up. These over here ought to be about done drying.
this was the first one I made today. It's not great. It's going to take some Dremelin. Okay, now, like I said, straight down, because as it applies the weight and the force, those layers of glue can let it shear sideways. And then you end up with a ruined gear. Straight down. Hey Google, set an alarm for one hour. So these gears are done, uh, done gluing, but there's still parts like here. So you get a little paper there between those teeth. So this gear is going to take some extra attention. These, the teeth are just all messed up. Let's see if we can get that to focus. I don't know if you can see the different layers there. They're not perfectly aligned. So that'll happen. Try to avoid it. Let's see what we can work on next. Gears, gears, gears. Well, that's 16 minutes. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry. Thanks for hanging with me. So here's the clock housing. I finished that yesterday. It's totally empty inside, but uh, I hung it up just to get it out of the way, keep the kids from playing with it. And last night I finished the the four sections of the pendulum. So when I get done with these gears and all my gears are drying. I will work on assembling the pendulum and the pine cone weights that go on the bottom. The pine cone weights are interesting. There's something I haven't figured out yet. Because I remember from the first clock that I made, it required more weight than would fit in the pine cone. It says in the instructions you need about two and a half pounds per weight. But every instance that I've seen of this clock working on YouTube, people have added weight. Uh, so I'm estimating that each is going to need to be about three and a half pounds for this thing to work properly. Then again, I am using a lot of dremeling and lacquering and I've got dry lubricant, which might make a difference. So maybe I'll start out with just the two and a half pounds that it said I should. But I'm trying to think, what can I put in those pine cones? make them heavier than just pennies. Mm. I can't think of anything. Nothing comes to mind. But if you have any ideas, please leave uh, your ideas for how I can make these pine cones heavier without affixing anything to the outside. I want to shove it all inside the pine cone so it looks good. Uh, I thought I might take like a couple rolls of pennies or a big roll of quarters or something paint it brown to match the pine cone and glue it under the bottom. You know what I mean? So I need to find a picture of it so you know what I mean. When we build the pine cones this afternoon, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And it might look good, but I'd rather everything be inside if possible. So, thanks for hanging out with me while we build this clock. That's number three.